Hi there, treasures. We are the queens from RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars. And we are about to take you through a brief history of drag culture. Oh, fabulous. Men have been dressing in what's considered women's clothes and vice versa for probably as long as human beings have been wearing clothes. But where did the term drag originate? The term drag was primarily used as a theater term to describe a man or woman who was dressed in clothing typically worn by the opposite sex. Before women were allowed to perform in theater, men played female parts, cross-dressing in women's clothes. It's thought that drag was chosen because it describes the action of long skirts dragging on the stage floor. Drag eventually made its way into American vaudeville shows in the late 19th, early 20th centuries. In 1911, Julian Eltinge, often referred to as the greatest female impersonator in theatrical history, won critical acclaim for his cross-dressing role in the play The Fascinating Widow. When homosexuality was outlawed, many decided it was safer to do their cross-dressing behind closed doors. But when prohibition rolled around, men found plenty of underground places popping up out of the sight of the law where they could drink booze, be openly homosexual, and of course, dressed in drag. The rise of these underground gay bars where drag was commonplace was then known as the Pansy Craze. Yes. The Pansy Craze continued to grow until in the 1950s and 60s, law enforcement cracked down on the members of the LGBT community, including us drag queens. Then, drag balls sprung into existence and became like many societies for drag queens everywhere. Drag queens could join up with local houses for moral support and shelter if they'd been thrown out of their own homes. By July 1966, there were an estimated 500 open and regularly performing drag queens in the United States. Now, something tells me that number's probably bigger, but you know, we don't be on too many registries. Mother Flawless Sabrina, R.I.P., was a leader for the transgender and gay communities and one of the first widely known drag queens in the United States. She organized multiple drag queen pageants across the United States, was arrested numerous times, and even appeared in drag on several talk shows, which was groundbreaking for the time. In the 1950s and 60s, drag queens began to protest unfair police treatment. These efforts came to a head with the famous Stonewall Riots, which lasted six days and are believed to have begun the modern gay rights movement in the United States. Barry Humphreys, Dame Edna Everidge, housewife and superstar character, rose to fame, first in the United Kingdom and then across the world. In 1972, indie filmmaker John Waters made drag friend Divine the star of his film Pink Flamingos. And Divine, who is iconic, if you don't know her, you better look her up, she soon became a counterculture icon. In 1975, Tim Curry famously played Dr. Frank N. Furter in the cult movie classic, The Rocky Horror Picture Show. The 80s gave rise to the trend of pop music stars dressing in full or semi-drag, including Philip Oakey, Pete Burns, and Boy George. In 1985, the New York drag festival known as Wigstock was founded by drag queen legend Lady Bunny, known for her signature insanely large blonde wigs. In 1988, Divine famously starred as Tracy's mother in the movie musical Hairspray. And to this day, it's been a tradition that a male in drag plays that part. 1980s drag ball culture is also where the phrase yes or yes queen caught on and became more widely used outside the drag community. In 1990, Jenny Livingston released her documentary, Paris is Burning, which offered an in-depth look at what it took to become a drag queen in Harlem's predominantly African-American drag ball culture. The 90s kicked off a new era of drag in pop culture. It saw the rise of many drag queens in film, television, and theater, including Coco Peru, Had a Lettuce, Misunderstood, Candace Kane, and Joey Arias. RuPaul, the most famous and influential drag queen in history, is largely credited for bringing drag into mainstream popular culture. His reign began in the 1990s with his hit 1994 song, Supermodel, You Better Work. In 1996, RuPaul got his own talk variety show on VH1, The RuPaul Show, 
which ran for 100 episodes. RuPaul, the drag mother of all drag queens, paved the way for prominent drag in popular culture in the 2000s and beyond. Honey, if it wasn't for RuPaul, I wouldn't be here. RuPaul's Drag Race, created in 2009, I was very young then, now gives a national platform for up and coming drag queen performers everywhere to earn their spots as top influencers in the community. The show has taken home numerous awards, including not one, but two Primetime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Host for Reality or Reality Competition Program. <laughs> How about that? And that's why we are here right now. See, now I hope you learned a thing or two about drag culture. And now that you got all that knowledge in your noggins, go forth and bring it into the world. 